right, hello everybody. Welcome to this new tutorial on Touch Designer. Uh, today we'll be covering the copy sub um, operator and its power to do instancing with multiple 3D objects. So um, first, this, this is going to be a first part of a two-part tutorial. Um, in the second part, we'll, we'll create a little visuals together. Uh, I'm hoping to do something like this. Uh, which will be widely inspired of uh, those kind of patterns, especially when you can see some overlapping between each uh, instance. This is something I really like, and we're gonna—it's gonna be um, some uh, designs more oriented uh, graphical design than motion. So w this is probably where the copy to sub will shine. Not copy to sub, just copy sub. Uh, the copy sub will sh will shine as. It's not the best for a uh, real time, um, real time uh, programming, or let's say real time installation when you have a lot of instances. But to do something precise, uh, it can be a super useful tool. So let's jump in right away. So here I have a fresh touch designer session, which I will delete right away and create my own new um, base component. I will call this a uh, pattern because eventually we'll do a pattern with it and it'll be easily uh, searchable when we'll be able to save it in our talks library. So as usual, before we start, let's create a couple variables which we will need for uh, most of our creation. So first let's add a pad, uh, page settings. We see it appear here and now let's call a resolution and let's use the XY component here so here it appears next I want an aspect for my aspect ratio I'm gonna take a float and finally I want samples which will be integers and let's add that um, but we can right away um, address all well most of them let's do our, our resolution is gonna be 9 by 16 we're gonna go into for a portrait um, portrait size, uh, portrait aspect ratio, and our aspect ratio is going to be our resolution X divided by our resolution Y. So let's just do that. Beautiful. And change this for that. And here we have our, res our aspect ratio. I'll toggle this as read only because this never has to change. And for the rest, we will be back quite soon. Okay. so. Before we talk about instancing with the copy sub, let's do like a minute of instancing in the regular fashion. So uh, as, as I always do, I'll start with a GLSL. Really little GLSL needed here, except our famous VUV.ST here. So we can have our UV map like this. VUV.SC, which will be um, a VEC2 RNG, 0 for the blue and 1 for the alpha. We can close this now. For our resolution, let's bring in our parameters we just created. So I'll bring this and slide it onto the resolution and I'll bind them as they will always change together and never dynamically. Beautiful. Let's go near pix nearest pixel, nearest pixel, and let's have 32 bits. Um, we're almost there. So, so thing is, if we look at um, this uh, setup as point, we see that it's square, which we don't want it to be square. We want it to have the same screen space um, as our window. So let's bring in a math. Okay. And in the X uh, component and the X axis, I want to like to shrink it with my aspect ratio. So. Uh, you'll see that it, it will make um, this image in the same format. Well, it will, no, it'll make those points in the same format as this image. So let's take our aspect ratio. We're not going from 0 to 1 anymore. We're going from 0 to aspect ratio. Okay, so now if we look at these as points, you'll see that uh, we're now uh, aspect corrected. Viewer active and V for image, V for image. Let's add a null, Alt N to create a null. Let's call it null tops and put everything in nearest pixels. That is it for 
<laughs> that the GLSL part of it, which was not really any GLSL. Now let's just quickly uh, think of how we would do this in uh, um, in a geometry. So let's let's bring out a circle, circle sub, a circle sub. Thank you. Let's dramatically bring down its size to 0 0.05, something like this. And let's add a geo. OK, so um, the regular way to do this and like the, the I would I would even say this it's like the, the power of touch designer is instancing, right? So uh, doing this like this is very fast. There's a lot of possibilities. Um, and this is really where touch, des touch designer shines. But today we're, th we're trying something a bit different. So, okay, we create a 2D, like, let's think about it like as a 2D array of points and we instanced a geometry. So we can control a ton of things here. Those are the attributes provided, um, if I'm not mistaken, by uh, the, the GPU. So we can modify directly our um, 3D objects. The thing is, sometimes those uh, attributes are not enough. Sometimes we need something a bit more precise. So this is exactly what we're going to address with the copy sub. So let's delete this. OK. Um, so first, let's let's recreate exactly this. OK, what we just done, let's do it with the copy sub. So let's me let me bring in the copy sub. So first, let's do like the normal example, the copy sub here. I can specify the number of copies. So let's say I ask for 20 and each of them I want to offset, offset them by one. And that was a lot way, way too big because my geometry is quite small right now. OK, so now we see we have 20 copies. The problem with the copy sub and that's like an, an, uh, a problem that will persist in this um, in this tutorial and in this technique, so just be aware of it. It's um, CPU heavy. So this first circle had 40 points, which was uh, okay. But here we add 40 points times tw tw times 20, which make 800 points. We don't really have this problem on um, instancing Geo because we're offloading all of this calculations on the GPU. Right now we're doing this on the CPU, which can be way more difficult. Okay, so. Um, let's let's recreate our, our setup as we were saying. So let's transform this null top in uh, in a chop. First, we don't need um, uh, the B and A attributes, so let's just delete those. And R and G represent uh, X and Y values, so let's rename this to T X and T Y. Okay. Right now. Um, if you look, we have eight um, eight samples here. We have uh, 144 pixels, so it's not quite working. This is because we have to uh, go to the crop section here and go to full image. Now we have a ton of uh, channels. Let's bring out the shuffle and reshuffle these by name, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. So now everything is in the right format for us to use it. Let's add a null, null, null instancing. Okay. So as I was saying a bit earlier, the power of um, this, um, this technique is to specify which uh, attribute we want to use. Let me rename this. So what I want to do is I'm going to add another transform, which I will call transform stamp stamping. So I can use this method, which uh, will specify which parameters are being stamped and which of those parameters are being stamped are going to be the attributes we are going to be able to modify through our chops. So hang with me. You'll see it's not that crazy complicated. So we use this function uh, fetch stamp which has uh, two parameters. First is the name we want to give it. So in our case, we want to give it TX and the default value, which I want to give zero. OK, let's do this for the X and the Y. 
nothing more complicated than that. So now this is being exposed and uh, directed into the copy and the copy sub and it's being <laughs> told, okay, you're going to be able to work on these uh, stamps. Numbers of copies. Okay, so th this is a number of totals, total um, sample we're going to be using. Um, it's 144. It's going to be width times height. So interest, uh, interestingly enough, we had prepared this earlier. So let's just multiply 9 by 16 to get our total samples. So it's interesting that here for the aspect we're dividing, we're dividing it and here for the total samples we're multiplying it and those are the two um, variables we need to make our setup work. Pretty neat. So, oops, close it too early. I'm going to take my samples and I'm going to drag it onto my copy sub as numbers of copies. Okay, let me uh, take out this translate. 0 0.1 put it at 0 and you see now all of our 144 uh, copies are stacked one on uh, on each other also I don't want my camera in my sub to move so let me toggle off adaptive homing I did this by clicking on viewer active and then right clicking into the window okay we can close this Let's go to the stamp tab here, stamp inputs on. And now we want to refer this chop right here. So each one of our uh, particles or instance can be addressed with the right channel. So let's first, let's do TX. And let's say, let me put this a little bigger here, OP. Did I copy that? Nope. I really don't want to rewrite this, so no instancing. Let's copy it here. Okay, first we want to specify which um, channel we'll be using. In our case, it's TX. And then we want to specify which sample of this channel we want to be using. And for this, we're going to use uh, the me.copy index. And here we have it. So let me just split my screen like this. And this Alt 3 will bring us here. And let's let me use null R for finish for render kind of whatever. Um, and I display the the display flag is now on. Okay, so this is a good start. Let's zoom out a bit here. And let's do the exact same thing for the TY attribute and change this guy for ty okay cool so <laughs> nothing very special because we had this two seconds ago which was uh, less um, legwork and a lot uh, cheaper and performance wise but there's more to it okay uh, let's add different geometry. So we have a circle. Let's add a sphere and let's put everything in a polygon. Okay. Polygon. Let's bring in a torus. Let's put this guy in the Z axis so we see it. Let's put it in polygon also. Um, a box. And let's switch that guy. Oops, not like this. I just want to rotate so we see the box. On. Okay, like this and like this, just so we really we see easily the box. Okay, so now let's add a switch. Let's put everything in there, in there, and let's call this switch switch sub. Okay, so let's add a new um, channel that will. Um, enable us to control which of this index will be um, putting at which position. So first, uh, let's uh, middle click on the, the shuffle and add a pattern. Okay, in the pattern, let's say uh, random non-repeating integers and we want it to go from 0 to 
zero to three because zero one two three that's how the switch sub is counting zero one two three um if we want to do it dy dynamically which obviously we want to do um let's do from range two not three but let's say op once again let me put this a little bigger like this op uh open brackets switch subs switch sub dot inputs which will return me a list a list will not be a valid number so i'll put all this in parentheses and call the len function will return the number of um objects there is in the list not objects but you, you understand me um and this will return four because one two three four um we don't do but we're, uh, we have to start counting from zero so minus one Let's call this index. And a great way to add add this is a, first to rename it, pattern index. And combine channels, let's append it. So we got everything and we can just replace it here. Okay. Now in our copy instancing, let's add another, um, no, another attribute, which we will call index, which we will right like this as we did all the other times and replacing this ty which i just copied from up here with index and you'll see that nothing is working yet why is that because we did not uh, fetch stamp our parameter yet so let's just do that so here let's write fetch stamp with a, a capital s okay let me put this bigger fetch stamp first parameter is index S second uh, parameter of this function is the default value zero and boom here we have it so first of all this is already pretty neat because we have a uh, different um geometry in the same um in the same system let's put the torus a little smaller because it's taking a little too much space okay interestingly enough I did changes, but they're not being updated. So when you do those changes, change upstream, you have to uh, right now. I see you have to force cook it. So not the best, but once again, this is not really, uh, I think, useful for real time stuff. It's more for like graphical stuff or uh, previous stuff or or real time stuff. I mean, we c you can always manage. Um, so all this is super cool. And one of the really cool features I think is uh, the ability of like, let's say you built something a bit more uh, sophisticated, sophisticated is to record this. So we can do save geometry and um, let's call it um, copy sub. Let's put it in the desktop. And if I just bring, if I just bring, bring my desktop, uh, copy sub dot tag okay so you see that i have it here now it's it's not it's uh there is no relationship between this and the setup so i i, I did a copy.tog uh where you can also uh save it as an obg or a fbx or all those formats right there so that's a that's pretty much it on all you can do so there's a lot more to do you can imagine that uh, you can add a lot of um of attributes to be controllable obviously uh this so this has now a lot of points <laughs> thirty-one thousand points so it gets heavy pretty quick pretty quick but it also enables you to do things that you just cannot do uh, with the geocomp so uh, hopefully I'll see you in the part two, which will be to create a little uh, visuals from this setup. And uh, if you like this video, please uh, like and comment and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Have a good one.